Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. You join me on a pretty wet and windy day here in Devon. We're planning on going silage in Friday. Today is Wednesday. I'm gonna cut some grass tomorrow, hopefully. But uh, what we need for Friday is the buck break, which is currently buried there behind all of this stuff. Um, the last time that we made silage, John was buck raking with the handler, which is behind me there. Um, he's actually away on holiday at the moment. So Craig's brother is gonna come and do the buck raking for us with his tractor. Um, of course, we need to get that out, put on the front of his tractor. So we're gonna dig that out, give it a bit of a birthday, grease it all up, um, and take it over to the other farm ready for Friday. But first, I need to move all this stuff here uh, so we can get at it. So that's the first job we're gonna do. Got the handler here, move the bucket, the grab, and then I need to put the forks on and move all those sausages for the uh, clamps. One good thing about the fact that it's raining is that uh, that trailer over there, the Fleming, that's been used to move dung since we've done solid, so that needs washing out. It's rained all morning, so that'll be nicely soaked for uh, ease of cleaning. So uh, I'll get started moving all this stuff here, and then um, I guess we'll put the tractor on the buck rake, pick it up and move it. We have got an adapter for it, so we can put it on the front of this. Um, but if it's the same width as the tractor, I'll take it to the other farm on the tractor, because uh, it'll go over the bridge. If not, I'll take it on the handler, lift it over the bridge. One times pallet forks. Some slurry spreading going on in the distance. How far can we zoom with this thing? So these sausages here that we call them, or gravel bags, whatever you want to call them, um, we only used them last year for the first time. We've got rid of all the tyres now on the farm. Um, far a few that are at the back of walls and that. 
Uh, we bought a load of these bags. So I think the bags work out about a pound each. Um, and pea gravel is about £40 a tonne or whatever it is. Oh, it was when we bought it. It might be more now. Um, and we spent a morning, me and Craig, the other day, filling up a load of bags. Um, we've got those fled bag things for fertiliser bags that you can spike and you can let out what you want. Turns out they also work for uh, half ton bags of pea gravel. What we used to fill them up saves us a whole load of time and energy and back pain, like manually shoveling stuff into those bags. So that's how I recommend filling those up. One more of these to move over here. I don't want to take them too far away because we'll want them on the clamp next week. Um, and then we'll get the tractor down and try and hook up the bike rake. This is what I was meaning earlier. We put one of those spikes in the bottom of a bag of pea gravel. Just open the chute and it all falls out the bottom. I think Will had been using them from a Cowley Hill farm with Will. If you haven't uh, seen Will's channel, go and check him out. He likes sheep. He's one of those rare breeds. But no, he's a good guy really. Go and check Will out. He's uh, got a good channel going. Right, try to... Let's go and see if we can move this buck rake. Right, first thing we need to do is go and find the top link. Which I believe is... Uh, on the mower still. Right, I need to go get the top link. So yeah, uh, got those balls on there, got the arms down. Should just be a case of driving into it and uh, Hooking it up, hopefully. Well, I think the first part was a success. Got that one there. Got that one there. Back down again. By letting it down again, it just brings the top link a bit closer. So then we've got to wind it out some part. Right, so that now should be ready to lift up. Only one way to find out, I suppose. Right, let's see it. We've got a uh, up and down on this one. Oh, he's moving. Now he's off the floor. I'll just back back a bit. You can see how long he's been sat there because he's full of weeds. Yes, the slide works as well. We'll take it up to the workshop and uh, give it a bit of a birthday. Look at that. Ooh. There it is in the workshop. All hooked on. The uh, thing you've got to be careful with is these are so sharp on these points where they get worn on the ground. But uh, we'll stuff some grease into it. And there's not a lot else you can do. I don't know the pipes are leaking, I don't think. They all look all right. It's all dry. I think all this moisture up here is all that minging water I tipped out uh, when we picked it up. But uh, perhaps when Phil's back from doing what he's doing, I'll get him just to stand here whilst I run it and see if there is any oil going anywhere. But all looks good. So there's some grease points on there. Uh, I'm guessing there's one on the bottom there somewhere as well. Yep. Uh, and then on the down on the rams there. And then these rollers. He should be able to turn. We'll oil them up and get them free. Job will be a good one. Don't try this at home, kids. We're out of grease. We're back in business. Right, I reckon that's uh, that job jobbed. So I'm gonna have dinner a minute and then afterwards we'll take that over the other farm and drop it off. It's all ready for Ross then when he comes on Friday. Right, so we've made it over to the other farm where we're gonna be butt raking on Friday. That thing is massive. It's actually narrower than the tractor very, very slightly. Um, so we can get over the little bridge with it, which is fine. Phil saw me across. But what a road presence that's got. And that's only a small butt rake. You get huge ones now. We get like. 12 feet on the front of the tractor. So uh, I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna put it on a couple pallets here just in case 
Um, the linkage on Ross's track that doesn't go down quite as far as this one. Because this one, they'll nearly touch the floor, the uh, arms. I'm sure his will be the same and it'll be fine, but um, just better to put it on a couple pallets. There's nothing worse than him not being able to pick it up and not having a loader here to pick it up with. So put two of these pallets down here, drop it on, and uh, we'll head back and wash the trailer. I got a load of spraying to do, but um, I don't know if you can see behind me. It's just calmed down a bit, but the trees are all wobbling. It's a bit too uh, a bit too windy to go spraying today, unfortunately. Right, that's all uh, unhooked. Leave the balls on it because um, we're ready then for Ross when he comes on Friday. I really annoyingly lost my pin that goes through here on the top leg, so I had to use a pop. But uh, I did have a nice snappy pin. It is definitely windy over here. Um, where's the best way to show you? You can see that tree moving about. Doesn't really show it very well. Anyway. Um, I just got out to put the front links up on the tractor because they stick out a long way. This is the clamp we're going to be filling on Friday. Currently got the straw chopper feeder wagon thing parked in there at the moment. Um, this pit feeds the cows that stay in all the time. So they're still here, so there's still 30 animals here. Five of them are going off tomorrow morning to the uh, abattoir. And for the time being, or the, the plan is that once we start making the new silage and all the old silage is gone, they move on to bales. So Phil's here with a load of tractor. He's been up. I've got a load of bales from one of our stacks. So that's what the cattle will um, be finished on now is those round bales. That way then the silage that we make on Friday will feed the animals that come in uh, next winter. So Phil's happy there playing on his Massey. If you uh, wondered why we've got green and red hats, the new ones, uh, linked in the description, it's because we've got a couple of Masseys and John Deere's here. So. People that drive Masseys might want a red hat, people that like John Deere's might want a green hat. Perhaps we'll have to get some blue ones for the uh, New Orleans boys. And girls, of course. Right, I'm headed home. Go do some power washing. Let's go back to the other farm and uh, hook the trailer on. Judging by what is coming out the back of it, I'd say there's a bit of water in it. Can't really see in this one very well. But uh, that's good, that means the floor will be soaked. So it all should pressure wash off pretty quick. I just put a picture on Snapchat of me moving the buck rake on the front of the tractor. And of course the mud guards are on and everything. The amount of people that have replied to me saying, take your mud guards off quick. You're gonna bend your steps oh, and all this. So now I'm having to filter through a load of messages telling everyone that don't panic. I'm just moving it from A to B. But uh, would be nice to see it on this tractor one day working, I think. Now, I know what you're thinking, that was an incredible bit of driving, so uh, thank you very much. I learnt that one at the Phil LeGrice School of Motoring. It's not too dirty in here at all, we'll just get rid of the uh, bit of muck around the edges on the grill. But we'll do it in the Crawford Farms way. That looks a lot better. So, uh, it only took me 20 minutes or so to do all of the inside, then all the wheels underneath the body, and uh, the front as well. Nice and clean. I also have a complete inability to wash anything on the back of the tractor without washing the back end of the tractor as well. Especially all in around the spools and um, above the power shaft and that. Just like to keep it clean so you can spot any small leaks that might start or anything like that. But um, that's all washed so we'll put that in the silage pit and we'll be ready for uh, Friday morning. So the trailer has now been drying in the silage pit here for a little while. It looks nice and clean, ready to go. Luke's trailer is still here, we'll be using that one um, 
early next week. Uh, you'll see that because we'll film all that when we go silaging. But uh, I was just looking at them. He's no taller, that trader, than the Fleming. But uh, he's a fair bit longer. Now, I'm pretty sure they're a bit wider as well because these will go over our little narrow bridge, which is uh, 2.3 meters. Whereas this one, no chance. But uh, yeah, nice trailers. I got completely sidetracked this afternoon. I went in the office for five minutes to speak to someone uh, with something to do with my phone. And I come out and Le Grice has jumped in my tractor and run off with it. So I had to go and chase him down, but he'd hooked it up to the cattle float so that in the morning, um, we'll go and pick up these five cattle from the other farm uh, and take them off to the abattoir. So that's all ready for the morning. One other job I need to do tomorrow um, is stick the dome on this tractor and update it. Because uh, this one hasn't had it back on yet since coming back here after winter from the other farm. So we'll stick the dome on, do the update. And then I believe Craig is going to go tedding tomorrow behind me when I'm mowing. He'll be able to use the auto steer then. Um, we well, will if he changes the steering wheel. We've got to change the steering wheel on this one for the auto steer because it's uh, retrofit, not factory fitted. But yeah, we had to go at the tether that you would have seen in one of the previous videos. So all these tines have been replaced with um, new ones or ones that broke. So he's all ready to go. He's all been greased. So it should be, should be good. So yeah, that's about all I got for you today, guys, I'm afraid. Um, let me know if you want to see the 155 doing a bit of buck raking one day. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, I will have to take off the steps and uh, mud guards and various things, but I'm sure we can make it happen. I'm just gonna put the quad bike in the shed before I go home. We cleaned out the um, sheds now so we can all park inside again, which is quite nice. But I am the last one here. Home time, guess. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, obviously, there'll be some silage in to come after this video because we're all getting set up for it. If you haven't done already, please hit the subscribe button. Give the video a like. That helps me out loads. We've cruised past 8,000 subscribers, which is mental. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. Uh, the channel really has sort of taken off in the last four or five weeks. If you want to see any more of what we get up to here at Northwick, um, there's loads of links in the description. Um, for all my other social medias that I post on daily. So uh, you can go and follow them to see what goes on here on more of a daily basis. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you on another video very soon. Cheerio.